Hello, hello, hello. It's Wednesday afternoon. Hello. This is Ginger Rankin with Izzy Harriet and Company. And uh, I'm coming to you to share some things that are on my heart. This afternoon, things the Lord is impressing upon me to share and to, to bring to you. And we're going to be talking about um, High Rocks and we're going to be talking about um, the Lord, you in the Lord, um, getting to know who you are in Him. We're going to be talking about how do I, how do I know where I fit, how I fit. Um, what is my life, even in the Lord? What is it supposed to be? I don't, I don't get it. I don't understand it. <clears throat> and I was sharing in a, um, love you, honey. I was sharing in a um, teaching that we did for uh, television the other day about you connecting with your calling in life. Once you're in the Lord, you know, sometimes I think we think that a calling is something that God puts on us after we're born again. It's a special thing, and that can be so. But we also have a calling in just being in the Lord, just being new creatures in Christ Jesus. That's a calling. And so I want to talk to you about that. I want to talk to you about um, coming to a place in your walk with him, if you've been walking with the Lord any length of time, and maybe you're at a place right now where you're questioning um, yourself, questioning um, your direction, questioning who you are, um, cause, because things change along the way. You know, time goes by and and things change, and you're you're being hopefully and prayerfully you're, you're being added unto uh, in your walk with the Lord. You know, from day to day, from season to season, from year to year. Hello, Yeshua, and hopefully you're being added unto. And yet you can come to places as you're progressing into seasons, even though. You may have been born again and, and, and been walking in it for a long time. You're going to come into seasons and you're going to come into times where you're going to need the guidance. You're going to need more exposure. You're going to need more of what I want to talk, really want to talk to you about today um, in depth, connecting and being in agreement with what God is really calling you to be in him. Um, I can talk about this because I've walked with the Lord for many years and I have gone through through seasons of change and sometimes you know you, God takes you in a, into a different pathway and you begin to question wow but that isn't what I that isn't what he was leading me to. I mean he was taking me this way. You gotta be, you've got to hear, you know, everything that we're gonna talk about today in order to be able to navigate through all of it successfully and and come away with knowing that I'm okay, I'm right, I'm there. And for me, um, recently for me, the Lord has had to uh, just take me aside set me down and say, you know what, you need to um, reconnect with your original calling. And you need to be one with that calling. You need to be okay with that calling. You need to be okay with what I've done in your life. You know, especially on social media today, um, we can get into such a comparison thing, and I've talked about this before, but we can just uh, get to the place where something comes in, and there are many factors that can contribute to it. Hello, uh, Os I can't pronounce your name, I'm sorry, Osfelsen, welcome. We can be in the Lord and have many things that come against 
what God is really trying to create us to be. And then we get uncomfortable with it. And, and we want to listen to what other people think. Or we want it to be the way that we want it to be. Hi, Tammy. And, you know, we get in this place where we're being tossed and, and torn. Um, and our identity is really uh, kind of being shredded because... We're tossed by this and that. We're tossed by our own feelings. We we're tossed by the winds that the contrary winds that'll just automatically come and blow against us so that we're not being built up. Excuse me, what God has for us to be built up. And there are many things that are going to come against that. And the Lord recently has had to take me back and say, okay, and I didn't see, I didn't even realize it. But I had become very um, uncomfortable, um, not even approving of what God has done in my life. Like I wanted to just kind of take it all and make it into something else. You know, I wanted to make it different than what it was. And um, we don't want to do that because you know what? When we begin to do that, when we take on the role of forming and creating who God wants us to be, we're going to get into trouble because we have to carry out with power, with anointing, whatever we're trying to create ourselves to be. And it, that isn't going to happen. That's not going to work. You know, Amos 3.3, 3, God says, how can two walk together unless they be agreed? And I've had to come back around myself here recently, sit down with the Lord, fellowship with him. Don't you love it when he does that with you? And he really takes you in the deep and he really begins to dig down in you and begin to straighten out some things that have gotten, you know how your house gets out of order? <laughs> I do. And, um, you just let things go and next thing you know you're trying to walk through a room and you're tripping over something because you didn't get that picked up or you know things just quickly because you're busy they get out of order and then things don't function as well as they should well that has been me recently and God has so beautifully he's always so beautiful to take us aside where we're at and to really work his work in us so that we can identify what he's doing. We can know exactly what it is. We don't have to uh, wonder. We don't have to drive ourselves, uh, you know, into turmoil or anxiety about it, even though a lot of times we do that. But I love God because he's so faithful to us. He's so tender and kind he's merciful his love is so deep and many times you know like here recently as well in uh conjunction with my having kind of pushed away who i am in god who god has created me to be i mean we're talking about four decades of god creating me to be who I am. This is his story in me. This is his writing in me. And and now after four decades, why all of a sudden would I would I not be comfortable with that? Would I not be um wanting to dwell in that place? And that's what I want to talk to you about today because God wants us to dwell and inhabit places that he has foreordained for each one of us to walk in, to inhabit. Hello, Lisa. And we all have our unique places, our unique callings, our unique walks in life, right? But they have to be inspired by God. I, I just believe that they, the only way that they're going to be successful, the only way that they're going to bear kingdom fruit is if God himself is really the author and the finisher of what it is that we are becoming. And, um, you know, I am so thankful that God has taken me 
and and really told me you have got to get back to your original calling you've got to get back to who I've been to you all these years what I've done in your life who I have created you to be and you've got to value that again like you used to like you did at one time so whatever the erosion is maybe you're there how many of you could say that maybe you're there today and some things have been eroded away and you're just in need of some clarity you're in need of some definition um, you're in need of God just really rerouting everything in you and causing everything that has become scattered to come together and make sense again where you can walk forward and know that you know that you know that God has has spoken to you God has done something in you God is working this work in you and and you can be confident in it and I want to mention this to you that is so important today because as you know I part of my ministry is um, the day and the hour that we're living in because I know that it is a particular day and hour it is a day where I know that we are living in the end of the end times and many people will disagree with that and that's okay but again I have to be comfortable in my calling hello Roxy I have to be comfortable in knowing okay this is who God told me to be you know um, I went to do a prophetic meeting back in 2004 and the Lord while he was ministering to me and showing me because this again was a new season and a new direction for me and God again is so faithful and he showed me that day when he was preparing me for that meeting he showed me myself walking or driving up a one-way street the wrong way and he said I just want you to know that when you're going in this new direction that I'm going to begin to take you in you will be going against in other words you're not going to be in the flow hi Lisa you're not going to be in the flow have you ever been there you know God when God comes and and decides he wants to mold something in you he wants to create something of you he doesn't ask you if it's what you like <laughs> he doesn't go and go to your family members and take you on his arm and say it can I borrow her now for a few minutes can I can I take her aside and I'll bring her right back and and uh, you know I promise she'll be safe no you know we go away with God ourselves and God has his way it has to be that way God has to have his way in us or we're gonna be filled with nothing but ourselves and we're gonna we're gonna walk around this life as a Christian and we're gonna be frustrated and we are not going to have the experience that God wants us to have in this life now being that I believe that these are last of last days I believe that we are we need to be the most powerful people that we've ever been in Christ Jesus in this day hello George we need to be so equipped in this day and we're, we cannot get that if if we're uh, if, if we're not attentive if, if you don't understand all the things that I've already spoken about here just in these short few minutes together already you're gonna have a hard time you know God wants us full God wants to use us um, you know and we have to yield ourselves onto that we have to understand that and then we have to yield ourselves to it so that God can work out the performance of it in our lives so I want to start out today by sharing out of Psalms 107 7 because I'm gonna just share with you exactly what the Lord has put on my heart to bring and Psalms 107 7 says he led them forth by the right way 
that they might go to a city of habitation. Now, a city of habitation, we all know that, that God comes and dwells in our inner man. We know that. Most of us who are born again, we understand that. But we, God comes to perfect a place in us to give us a seat, okay? And, and a seat is a place where we have authority. Uh, it is a place that God calls us to function in, like a, a you know, people, a seat in the White House, okay? Uh, President Trump has a seat, a seat of authority, a seat of responsibility that comes along with that authority. And today, one of the things that that is so lacking in our world is that part that People want the seat of authority, but they don't want to recognize the responsibility. They don't want to have the understanding or the knowledge that it takes to put somebody in that seat who can be effective in that seat. And so thus we had all the, the warfare over whether Donald Trump would be the right person to be president of the United States of America because does he have the wherewithal? Does he have the wit about him to fill, properly fill that seat? Well, it is a seat and it is a dwelling place and there is protocol and and there are certain things that have to be accomplished in that seat. And I love this in the Hebrew. It talks about that dwelling place or that habitation. He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. I love it that it's it, it, part of the Hebrew definition is an assembly. And... I know when we think of assembly, we think about our gathering ourselves together. We assemble ourselves together with one another. But I always love what the Holy Spirit showed me is that we have parts that get assembled in that seat where God has to come and divinely reveal to us, who am I calling you to be? What do I want you filled with? And, and that's all an assembly, a putting together that God has to do in our inner man. A lot of that has to do with us even beginning to understand what salvation is for us, what it's really about. Because here's the thing, God isn't about uh, coming into our lives and then glorifying our flesh. He, he doesn't come into our lives to lift us up, who we are, our flesh person. God is come in to dwell in us, to glorify himself in and through us. So God isn't going to, um, hey, Cynthia, God isn't going to um, rally our flesh. You know, he, he's going to, He's bringing himself in us, all of his power, all of his glory, all of his ability, all of who he is to come and, and sit down in us, to dwell in us, to assemble us according to him in us, Christ in us, the hope of glory. And then he wants us to follow him with all of that. So I love this, that he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. I love that. Now, when God was speaking this to me, hi, Daisy. Oh, I love you, sister. When God was speaking this uh, to me, and, and Daisy, this is kind of like a lot of things that we shared on our conference calls. Um, and I have that in mind as I am sharing this today because what we're talking about here today, believe it or not, will also affect your um, success in intercession, your effectiveness in intercession. You know, if, if, if we don't get worked out who God is telling us we are inwardly, we won't be praying effectively. We won't know how to pray. 
And um, we know that the disciples came to Jesus and said, tell us, teach us how to pray. We get that. But to even know who we are in Christ, to know that God is trying to lift up his essence, his being in us, to get that to be the dominant power in us. You know, Jesus said, um, the flesh profits you nothing. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. But there are many of you here who don't believe that, you know. But, but, but it is Christ in us that God is trying to get him to, to dwell in us and to um, inhabit, inhabit us. His fullness to be allowed to reside in us, to grow in us, to become more and more and more of who he fully is in every avenue that he chooses to lift himself up in and through us with. Am I making sense to anybody out there today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But when God was speaking all of this to me, he took me in to Job and I'm not, we're not going to dive into that today. But you know how Job, his friends came and really, really, uh, dear friends, Job tried to create a habitation. Or not Job, but Job's friends with their words and their mindset and what they thought of Job's situation and what they thought of Job himself. As a, as a man of God, okay? And, and they were exercising their judgment over Job. <clears throat> they were thereby creating for Job a habitation for him to dwell in because Job really did uh, bow down to that for a time. In a way, he fought with it. In a way, he resisted it. But it grieved him. And God, see, here's the thing. We God wants us to be in such a place with him that what he's creating us to be inwardly, it does not get grieved. It doesn't matter what you say to me. It doesn't matter what you do to me. It doesn't matter how you judge me. Paul said in scripture, what? You judge me? I don't even judge myself. You know, there's only one judge and that's God. And God knows what he wants us to be. And so, you know, we can't allow ourselves again. Here I am 40 years into what God has done over 40 years in my life. And here I am at 40 years and, and, and just getting ready to launch into something new. And God is saying to me, you know what? You need to get back in your own skin and you need to be comfortable and you need to get into the deep of where I had you and what I had formed you to be all these years and be comfortable with it. And so Job, here, here Job was too. Listen, Job was well established with God. He talked about, oh God, I remember when all these wonderful things, how my life worked, you know, my steps were were with butter. They were anointed with butter. I mean, Job was in it with God. Job had it going on with God. Job knew what God could do in a man's life. Job was following God. He was righteous. God told Satan, look at, look at this man. What do you think of him? And so Job had a place. Hello, Pastor Paul. Job had a, a deep place with God already okay but something happened in his life and then everything that Job was with God what happened to it what happened to it well I'll tell you what Job you know Job would have been even worse off than he was had he not had that experience with God had he not allowed God to be molding and creating within him who God designed him to be. 
at that point in his life when everything came in and ravaged his life. And, and the one thing I want to say to you here at this point, too, is that we need to know as New Testament Christians something that Job did not know back then, and that was how the enemy uh, would come against your life. John 10.10, 10, Jesus said, the enemy comes, the thief comes to rob, still, steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life and have it abundantly. And in the New Testament, we're taught warfare. We are taught spiritual warfare. And we need to know that um, in our lives. We need to know that that's part of the equipping that comes to us. That's part of this thing in Psalm 107, 7, where he says, he led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. And so um, it is so important to see that we have that building up. But let me tell you something. Even Job, when he was old in the Lord, had been in the Lord, was solid in the Lord, went through some stuff, and then people came in, Job's friends, and estimated his life, judged his life. They dug around and they counseled together and they decided what God was thinking about Job. And if Job had totally and completely allowed himself to, he could have bowed down and made their idea of Job made what what they were reflecting that God's idea of Job was, Job could have taken that on as his habitation before God. And I don't believe that Job actually succumbed to that. And this is what we're going to have to be careful of in these days. That's why it's so important, my friends, that you are so in a deep place with God, that you so understand his inner workings in in our lives how does this happen what does god want to see how is this supposed to be working in me because if you don't have that going on then the enemy can come in the enemy can send people the enemy can send family the enemy can send your own doubts your own ideas of who you are and next thing you know, you're going to have this habitation that you think God is calling you to dwell in. And, and it's not God at all. God has nothing to do with it. Let God be the author of this habitation for you. Let God be the one who is creating that habitation for you. And, and showing you, listen, showing you actually how to create a habitation for him in you. Amen. Glory to God is so rich. It's so, so rich. So then as God is sharing all of this with me, and I'll have to watch my time, and I don't know how I'm going to do that because I don't even have a watch on. Um, when God is showing me that, then he speaks to me, of course, uh, the scriptures that talk about us, as being the head and not the tail. We are above and we are not beneath. And and took me into the Hebrew of that. And I love this because here's the thing. You've got to understand, if you haven't come to terms yet with the fact that it is Christ in you, the hope of glory living inside of you, that you are not the one living anymore. You died with Jesus. You were buried with him in his death and you are resurrected in that same power that raised jesus from the dead now the bible says in romans 6 and 8 that we have to reckon that we have to reckon ourselves dead we have to know this in christ jesus that all of that is gone it's dead we're not talking about that we're talking about who we are who is inhabiting our very being now that we're in Christ Jesus, okay? And so you have to know the personality. And, and when God says, I've called you, you are the head, this is what the Hebrew means. You are chief. 
you are top. Now, are you that of yourself? Are you that in the flesh? Is he talking about you? No, he's talking about you in Christ Jesus. He's talking about Christ Jesus in you. He's not talking about you, who you were in the flesh, because your flesh has been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but it is Christ that lives in me. And so when you're called the head, the Hebrew teaches that <clears throat> You have to recognize, you have to come to terms with the, the, the news, the good news, that the chiefest, this chief, excellent, top beginning, this captain who never fails, um, is in you now. This, this is who you are now. You are not who you were in that flesh person, okay? Because you're identifying now yourself with Christ who is in you. Amen. And so it's powerful. It is so powerful. And as I said, you can't, you can't live. I don't believe that a Christian can live effectively in the day that we're living in right now. If you don't have these things intact, if, if, if you haven't had the Holy Spirit come, if you haven't had the fivefold ministry planning into you and teaching you, teaching you, teaching you, building you, that, that these are the things that are now in you. This is who you are now because the greater one is living in you, right? And so he is totality. He is some total. I love that because he comes in the sum total. Listen, everything that is, everything that ever has been, everything that ever will be was created by God. It's all in God. He is all in all and he is in you today. And, and if you know what that means, give me a heart or give me something because that, you see, you can't be effective in your Christian walk until you know this, until you know that I've identified myself in that because this is who God, through Christ Jesus, is bringing me to be, to know, to become. Amen? And for God to be able to manifest all of that, excuse me, in this earthen vessel, I am not who I used to be. No, I'm not because I have the power of God. The person of God is living in me, habitating. He's, my, he's ha inhabiting me, right? He is there. Do I recognize him? Do, do I fellowship with him? Do I talk with him? Do, do I act like he's really there? Um, because he is there, my friends. He is there. If you are born again in the new birth, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. The seed, the incorruptible seed has been planted in you. Jesus Christ is dwelling in your inner man. And so you have to come to terms with this, this knowledge and this truth, my friends, that you have the chiefest of all things living in you. And that is so powerful. We are the head. That's what the head is. And I like to think, I like to share what the Holy Spirit showed me. You know, I'd rather be the head than the tail because what does the head do compared to the tail on an animal? Just take an animal. <laughs> pretty, pretty simple, but pretty profound because it is the head that does all the thinking. It is the head that leads the body. It is, it is the head that, you know, you have wisdom there. What does a tail do? You know, it just, it just gets drug about by the head. No, we're not the tail anymore. And so I want to read the Hebrew of that to you real quickly too. The tail is an end. It's a stump. Oh my. It's a, it's a sense of flopping, failing, flopping. Um, 
And, and that is not, my friends, that is not our habitation. I'm going to read that again. Psalm 107.7. He led them forth by the right way that they might go to a city of habitation. God wants you to know what that habitation is so that you can function in it every day of your life. And we can't produce, my friends, you can try. You can try to produce God personality, God anything, and you cannot do it out of your flesh. God reproduces himself by himself. You can't reproduce God. God reproduces himself, okay? And... Um, and so you have to recognize that and you can you can live your whole Christian life and and live it really uh futilely if if you don't connect with the calling that is in you by Christ Jesus being in your inner man and living in you. Am I making sense to anybody out there? Okay. So we're not we're the head and we're not the tail. We are above. That means that we're upward. We're above. We're higher. We're exceedingly up above. You know, we are the forward ones. We, we have the uptake on everything. Everything in the kingdom of God is a higher place than what we know here. What we know of in our own flesh and and, and, and we're so limited. We're so limited because it's just not what God's essence. It is not God's essence. Again, the flesh profits you nothing, but the spirit brings life. Amen. And so uh, we need to come into connection with all of this. And again, I'm trying to bring this to you because... The one thing that God wants us to know, um, you know, I have the persecuted church on my heart so much so today, and we can't even pray effectively for the persecuted church if we're praying on our own, if, if we're praying out of our own mind, if we don't have the mind of Christ, if the mind of God is not operating in us, I'm talking about the very person of God living in us, uh, bringing his thoughts up through our inner man where we can hear them with our ears, we can see it with our eyes, our heart can understand what it is that God is saying to us. We can't even pray effectively. We can't be the church that prays effectively for the persecuted uh, people of the earth today. And I'm going to have to close out here for this session. But take that much and we'll come back. I have so much more um, to bring to you. So much more that needs to be planted in us for the right now. I'm talking about specifically for the moment that we're in right now. The day that we're in right now. We need more than ever before to be so connected with our calling, who we are in Christ Jesus, so that everything that we do, it, it will produce God. It will produce God will, God prayers, God fruit in us. We can't produce it ourselves. And so I'm going to leave this here and I'm going to come back uh, very, very soon. And we'll dive deeper into this because there's just so, so much more for us to hit on. But in the meantime, look at Romans chapter 8 and really read through that from beginning to end of Romans chapter 8 because you're going to see the essence of everything we're talking about here um, today. And a lot of times what we do with Scripture Again, we analyze it and we estimate it after our own thoughts, after our own uh, judgment. But when you allow God 
in you the holy spirit ephesians 1 18 says that the holy spirit will enlighten the eyes of our understanding so we can really know what the scriptures are talking about read romans chapter 8 come back and join me next time we're going to go through that chapter and i want to share with you what that chapter literally means to us today in this day that we're living in right now how important it is to us that that we can produce in and through our lives what god is really looking for and so i i bless you right now father i thank you for this time that i've had today with all these friends who have stopped in lord god you know their every need you know where they're at with you, Father God. You know how much of um, what you want to do in their lives, what you want to create them to become. You know exactly where they're at with all of that work that you're trying to work in them. And Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that the mighty, mighty working of the Holy Spirit combined with the power of your word, Father God, that it will, it will perform that, Father, which you sent it to perform. I pray, Father God, that their eyes would be open to see greater glory, to, see, to hear you sharper, Father God, in this day than in any other. And I pray, Father God, for a quick and powerful work, God, that you can do in our lives every day day in this day because it is so needed in the body of christ you need it to be there father so that you can accomplish the things that you have ordained to accomplish in this day that we're living in right now so do come back do watch for um the next live video and um, maybe i'll put out a notice ahead of time so you can join me but I've enjoyed sharing with you. I hope something I've said has, has quickened you. And do get into that deep place and bring these things before the Lord and say, Father, show me too. Show me too. I love you. I bless you. I pray you have an awesome night tonight. And I'll see you next time right here on Truck Treasures with Ginger Rankin, Izzy Harriet and Company. Bye-bye for now. Love you all.